I wanna talk about on-leash greetings and why those on-leash greetings are possibly the worst thing that you could be doing for your dog. So I see it all the time out and about at parks, at public places, things like that. People are letting their dogs walk up to each other on the walk, pull towards each other, greet, and almost all the time it ends poorly. And a lot of the dogs that we have coming to our facility that have leash reactivity issues, dog aggression issues, insecurity issues, all sorts of things like that, they've had a lot of these in the past. A lot of these on-leash greetings where people are coming up into their space or dogs are coming up into their space and it's just not going well. So I wanna break down why these are such a bad idea because a lot of people always ask that question. Like, why can't my dog meet other dogs? You know, they bark and growl, but when they get up to that dog, they're usually fine, so on, so on. So there's a couple reasons why on-leash greetings are so bad. So if you think about it from a typical social standpoint, if dogs were, you know, loose and socializing or whatever it may be, they have the ability to move around freely. There's nothing holding them back. If a dog is stressing them out, they can walk away. If they want to engage in another dog, they can go up to them. And, you know, nothing goes too poorly from it because they can move around freely. There's nothing restricting them. When you're on a leash, things are totally different. So most dogs, though they may have a four to six foot radius from that leash of space that technically they can move around in, they feel restricted, right? So when they're on that leash, they, even though they can move there, move there, whatever it may be, they still feel like they're trapped right in this exact same spot. So because of that, it builds up a lot of pressure, right? So let's take the example of some dogs that are insecure around other dogs already. Each time we let another dog come into their bubble like that, we're tapping into their sense of fight or flight, right? So those are the two things that dogs know how to do. They know how to either flee and get the heck out of there, or they know how to react. When they're already restricted and trapped on that leash and feel like they have nowhere else that they can go, their only response at that point is fight. So what happens? The dogs get stressed out, they get stressed out, they get stressed out, and then all of a sudden they start trying something else. They growl, they bark, they lunge, they do something different than they're used to doing. They tap into that fight drive. Um, what happens there is the other dog typically will go away, right? What happens? They meet each other on leash, one of them starts barking, and then all of a sudden the other one goes away. Wait. It clicks in their head, that worked, right? That reactive behavior worked in accomplishing what they wanted, which was make that other dog go away. So then what happens is each time that starts happening from then on, the behavior amplifies, the behavior amplifies, and it gets worse and worse and worse until on sight of seeing another dog, they just start losing it. Because they know if I make a big commotion in a big scene right now, it's gonna make that other dog go away. So it reinforces that anxiety, it reinforces those fears of other dogs, and it, 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 just, it just creates this cycle of chaos, right? So let's take the example now of a dog that's not insecure of other dogs and is actually super, super playful. You know, David, why if my dog loves other dogs, can I let them meet them on other dogs? Same exact concept, right? So the problem that a lot of owners struggle with is they struggle with dogs not being able to control their impulses around other things. They see dogs and people on the walk and they wanna just drag them towards them or pull around or do this or that. So each time they're meeting that other dog out on the walk, we're conditioning tons and tons of excitement, right? They see another dog get really, really excited. It's playtime, we're gonna go interact, this and that. Um, and the same concept, that cycle just builds on itself and builds on itself and you know, until the dogs just same deal, start out of that frustration of the leash holding them back from getting to what they wanna do. Even though it's a playful thing, it builds up and turns into reactive behaviors. In addition to that, a lot of dogs, like they're just, they're hyperactive when they play, right? They wanna bounce around and move and run and jump and stuff like that. Being on a leash doesn't give them the ability to express any of that. So not only does it kind of inhibit their ability of playing in a way that like nature is intended for them, but it builds more frustration. Even that playful dog, if put in too much, you know, of a frustrated situation like that, it could start turning into more problem behaviors. It could start turning into aggression and stuff like that. So this is huge, right guys? Just like, just, just stop doing it. There's, there's plenty of other ways that you could socialize your dogs, right? If you have a friend that has a dog that you know and trust, you could set up a play date. If you could find a structured doggy daycare, you could get your dog their social outlet that way, right? There's so many ways to do it outside of meeting dogs out on the walk with the leash. In addition to that, you just don't know the other dogs, right? So who's to say that, you know, Joe Schmo walking down the street with their dog, that their dog isn't aggressive and they think they're the most social dog in the world and then all of a sudden, your dog just playfully strolls up to them on the leash and then the same deal is going on with that dog and that leash creates frustration and all of a sudden, bam, your dog gets bit or gets attacked out on the leash by another dog and then you're setting yourself back and, and possibly running into dog aggression issues. So this is just a really big one. Just, just stop introducing your dogs out on the walk. There's absolutely no need for it. There's plenty of other ways to socialize them. There's, there's just too many downfalls to it, right? So I see, I see people struggle with this all the time. So 
stop doing it. Stop doing it. Just, just, just don't.